The piece of music I get emailed about most, I didn't actually write. It's an interlude in a film called Secret of Moonacre, and it was composed by a Polish composer who recorded the pre-records for the film. I did the score. The film featured a piano as kind of almost like a cast member, so I had to use lots of different pianos within the score. A Bosendorfer at Air, a Model B at Air Adele Studios, and a Yamaha Upright that we hired from Bell Percussion. I used those in both of those studios. It was during one of those sessions that an engineer came up to me and said, have you heard this thing with the practice pedal down? Which I'd never heard of. It's the middle pedal. It puts a little bit of felt behind the hammers. And so the 12 year love affair with me and the Celeste pedal was born. I sampled it in 2008 and in about 2010 released it as a freebie as part of the Spitfire Labs range. We called it the felt piano because I didn't know that it was actually called the Celeste pedal. And I think the name caught on. And I don't know if we're part of the kind of the surge of the use of the Celeste pedal because of this quite popular sample, or whether it's just kind of part of that singular zeitgeist that it's now become an incredibly popular sound. And I rarely see people playing pianos without the Celeste pedal engaged. Indeed, Olafur Arnold's new album, Remember has a track on it that's like a felt Niagara. But a lot of you who have downloaded this and other felt pianos have asked me, how do you mix it into your tracks? Or how do you bed it in? Or rather, how do you let it stand out? Because there is, in my mind, a degree of complexity in mixing a felt piano into a track. So check out my Schimmel C114 Junior. It's kind of almost like a school piano, a practice piano. And then with the felt down. So bearing in mind I've got the mics really, really close, a pair of Neumann M149s. The actual part of the piano that resonates is actually round at the back, the thing that makes the sound. So by taking the front off, you're not making it brighter or louder. You're just actually exposing the inner kind of working so you hear the hammers more, which is something that I like. Now, that's quite a kind of pianistic thing. I wouldn't necessarily play a felt piano part like that. So let's try, say, this very, very stupid, simple kind of riff with this Celeste pedal up. And then down. I don't know what it is about the felt. It seems to work really well on particularly boring sounding pianos. It's, I, I think because the felt is resting up against several strings simultaneously when you engage the hammer, it actually, I think, changes the harmonic series and brings it to light in a kind of more chromatic sense. But I also think something that's really enticing about it is it flattens out the dynamic so you can achieve a very broad, open sound without actually having to kind of compress it. It's already pre-compressed before it's even got to the microphone. And that's a key point that I'm just about to get onto. Okay, so that riff is from a TV series that I just finished, um, and I've actually got an arrangement surround it. So let's lay that riff into the arrangement and look at how I would mix the live piano, and then I've got a selection of other felt pianos, sample ones, that I've got in my rig, just to compare them and, and see how I'm going about mixing those. So let's lay that down. Now I think 
a lot of the problems that people are having with the felts is they can sound muffled, they're difficult to pull out of a mix, they, they lack that beautiful kind of upfront quality that they have when you're playing them solo. So my suggestion before adding loads of plugins, you know, dynamics and EQ, is to just hype it in the mix, to bring it really forward to that point where you want a felt piano, really in your face, surrounding you, personal, emotional. So. I'm simply first going to feed it some some decibels, five. And uh, let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So for me, that, that's a bit more of a, a warm blanket. Now, let's have a listen to how we can really even out the dynamics so we can just push it forward even more. Let's try and apply just a soft amount of compression. I'm not going to smash it. I don't want to strangle the piano. I think pianos can sound strangled so quickly with compression. So let's. I'm just going to use the basic uh, Logic ones here. And they do have very good presets. So let's go keyboards, piano. <laughs> Let's just put a bit of EQ in. I think there's something about the second note that peeks out. I think it might be around this kind of area here. So let's have a listen to that. Yeah, so if we just try pulling this down a little bit. Nice upfront personal. Now I must add that I have actually added a bit of reverb to it. So let's just listen without. Again, just to bring everything together, I find just a little bit of splosh. Even if you're trying to make it sound dry, you'll often find when you listen to records that actually things do have reverb on, even if they sound kind of totally arid. So it's the Concert Hall Vienna with the Fab Filter Pro R. Not particularly long, not too much of it. Just helps bring everything together. You don't really hear it once it's in the mix. So here's some I prepared earlier from my arsenal of sampled felt pianos, starting with Spitfire felt piano, Willem Sincock playing that very piano with the Celeste pedal down. Not recorded here though, recorded in London, and I've used a different mic selection on this. I've used the AK, which I think stands for AKG. So let's have a listen and compare that to the live one. Lovely. Now, the thing that tends to happen with uh, these sample instruments is the dynamics get ironed out a little bit. It becomes less temperamental like pianos. Different strings will have different harmonic qualities, which will mean it rings out, and the sampling process tends to iron that out. So let's have a feel of that. It has a much less temperamental feel to it. It does, for me, psychologically, it doesn't feel as responsive as a piano, but actually in the context of making media music, it does mean that things can sit a lot easier. So I think I'll have to apply very little compression to this. And maybe there's a slightly different EQ profile that I don't like as much as the M149s, so I just might make more of a smile sound. There's a bit of stuff going on in the mid. something in the mid-range I'm not as happy about. So let's just have a quick look. It's around there, so I'm just going to pull that down. Just make it a bit warmer. It's a bit better. Let's see how that sits. OK, 
okay that's good and i might try pulling this compression across from the shimmel starting to get that strangled feel which some people like but I think the whole point of felt pianos and it's been interesting to do this experiment is that you get a, a warm rich open sound but with a compressed dynamic but not one that's being com compressed with a compressor so it doesn't have a compressed sound it just has a flatter dynamic and that I think is the appeal of felt pianos let's have a listen to the Spitfire soft piano which is actually available free in its own plugin listed down below I'm using the contact version um, simply because I've been lazy and haven't got the, the latest version. Very different piano. I, I actually played this one. A great thing about the Schimmel is you can put the Celeste pedal on and still play no effort. But this you really have to hammer it to get a sound out of. And I think it adds to the slightly more unpredictable, more magical sound of it. necessarily in this kind of range here and if I was to use it in that range it would be really kind of isolated and solo so I don't know how well this piano is going to fare against these mandolins and cymbals that kind of stuff but let's just have a listen nice I'm getting some elements which I'm liking others not so much let's just see if there's anything we can do with EQ it does have a very lovely quality to it that you can really hear the felt and you can hear the felt touching the other strings as well quite kind of magical but again maybe not quite right for a song like this and I'm just going to control it a bit with some of this compression see how it reacts to that It's really strangling the sound. Is it helping it other than just bringing up some noise floor and the sense of de decay? I don't know, but let's listen to it in the context of the track. So on to Olafur Arnold's Amazing. And this is not an upright felt, this is a grand felt. It has the kind of bandwidth of a, of a grand piano, but again with that suppressed dynamic. First of all, it's a louder instrument. Let's have a listen what's going on with the felt. Okay, I've just added the same amount of reverb to all of these pianos. Great, I'm actually gonna take this off because what I find is it, it interferes with the symbol a bit. So it kind of, it's just, there's a bit of too much detail in that particular area. But again, a great sounding uh, bit of kit. Let's put the compression on and see how it responds to that. I really don't like it. I'm actually going to remove that. Again, it has this strangled feel. And what's brilliant about the felts is they have an open sound. It's not compressed. It's not smashed to bits. But it also has a kind of restricted dynamic. I'm not going to stop there. The actual piano I used on the actual series was something called my triple felt, which is actually an experimental piano. <laughs> It 
So really, this is all about the mechanics of the piano. It has a real upfront, almost kind of homemade Victorian contraption kind of sound to it. I've also... That sustain is fake, it's the, the real sustain of the piano, but I've actually uh, time-stretched the decay and boosted that. So basically it's the Shimmer 114, but with three layers of felt. What I thought was interesting, when I put it into the mix, it was all kind of muddy in the center. So I went one step further, I did my tracking and stacking technique. So basically I panned this one, and let's have a look at that. So my triple felt is actually available down below or from this new project called uh, Piano Book, which is pianobook.co.uk, again linked below, and an introduction to that project is just up above here. So that's all standard, but then if we have a look at this second one, what I do is I pan that, but then what I do is I transpose it up three and then tune it down three. So basically it's playing the same notes, but accessing different samples to give it this tracked effect. Now this is a pop technique that you use to you know, create something that's stereo, and it's so stereo it's kind of clear of the middle, it just gets to either side. So let's have a look at those together. And again, the trick with this is to make this remarkably upfront in your face. And you'll see I've not used any dynamics, any EQ. So I've played it, placed it, tracked it, and panned it according to what's going on in the music without putting piles of plugins on. So I think the first thing to understand is why you're using a felt piano. I think it's okay to write with something that's inspiring. This is what's so wonderful about taking something like Olafur Arnold's grand felt piano on the road with you. You can write with it, it's absolutely fantastic, but it may not always fit within the arrangement of your piece. That's okay. Likewise, I simply think if you want a pure sound, some instruments just don't take to plugins as well as others. For example, a steel guitar can take a bit of hammering with EQ and compression. But you apply that to a nylon guitar and suddenly, I don't know, it starts sounding kind of, I don't know, lipstick on babies. It's like when you see someone with extraordinary beauty put lip filler in, suddenly it just goes all kind of wrong. I think to a certain degree strings are very much the same here as well. You have to be very careful with how you stack up the plugins. So I think the, the key question is asking yourself, is it balanced correctly? Can you not use pan to place it somewhere within the stereo field that means that it both stands out and beds in? And when you do use a plugin, try to be reductive as opposed to adding stuff in that just isn't there. So just for fun, I'm going to play these down and it'd be interesting to get your vote on which one you prefer possibly just in the context of this track, but I would like to know if I made the right decision or the wrong one, according to the consensus here.
so a thing should appear somewhere which you can vote on. Be interested to see your thoughts on what you felt was the more suitable piano. You know, we have to think about the instruments that we use. Yes, okay, you use and write with flautando or with a felt piano because you find it inspiring and it kind of ties in with your aesthetic but it doesn't always suit the arrangement. So don't marry yourself to an instrument that doesn't fit within your mix. This is the beauty of virtual instruments. If you're having difficulty bringing the top end out of the felt piano, well, that's because it isn't really there. Just find a brighter piano. And when you're working within an arrangement, like I did my triple felt, I'm actually working with the sample. I'm building up the arrangement and I'm playing things in registers and transposing them so they fit together within the context of both the arrangement but also the mix. A simple rule, I think, is if you're having to work really hard to make the sound right, maybe the sound isn't right for your track. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, lots coming up. Hit that little bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a video up. If you like this video, one of those would be lovely, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.